Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question four from the Jan 2018 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the other videos in this playlist, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check that playlist out. And with that, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's take a read. So we have here at the top, it says Greenland Limited specializes in the production of fruits and vegetables. The company has plans to purchase an additional 10 acres of land. The authorized share capital of the company was, so let's take a look here, it says 1 million ordinary shares at a dollar each, totaling $1 million worth of ordinary shares, and 500,000 5% preference shares at $2 each, totaling $1 million worth of preference shares. Now, just a couple of comments here. So the $1 million on this side, that's the number of shares. The $1 is the par value or the basic understood and accepted value of the share. And of course, if you multiply quantity, the number of ordinary shares by the par value, you will get the total dollar value worth of ordinary shares in this case. Below here, the 500,000 is the number of preference shares. The $2 is the par value for the preference shares. So you can have different share types can have different par values. They don't all have to have the same value. And of course, when you multiply the 500,000 by the two, they'll get the $1 million worth of preference shares. Now this 5% that's the dividend rate on the preference shares. And that does not factor into the value of the preference shares. Okay, now they want to purchase 10 additional acres of land. So let's see, does this information here correspond to that? In order to raise the funds on 1 Jan 2017, the company made an issue of 200,000 ordinary shares at $1.50 each and $100,000 in 2% debentures. Then we have all the shares and debentures were fully subscribed. Prepare the journal entries to record the issue of the shares and debentures on 1 Jan 2017. Narratives not required. Uh, just so you know, they give you a general journal format with details, debit column, credit column, no date column. Scrolling down, just want to show you guys the total marks awarded for this question is five marks. So it's not supposed to be a very involved question and of course again one and a half minutes per mark so five by one and a half is seven and a half minutes so between seven and eight minutes per before this question sorry now let's scroll back up and take a little look a little closer look at what's going on here right so in order to raise the funds to purchase the additional 10 acres of land they issue 200,000 ordinary shares at a dollar 50. now you'll notice that that does not match with the one dollar par value it's more than a par value the extra 50 cents above the par value of a dollar is referred to as a share premium and companies are free to issue shares at whatever price they think um, potential shareholders will want to purchase it. So that 50 cents has to be accounted for separately from the par value. So when we make our journal entry, we're going to have to have two separate things, one showing the par value of the shares that are issued and one showing the premium on that issue. Now this, this $100,000 in 2% debenture, so first of all, a debenture is a type, it's a financial instrument that companies use to raise funds. It's like a loan, but instead of the company going to the bank or another lending institution and letting that institution set the terms and conditions of the loan, like the interest rate and the repayment schedule, the company, the borrower, creates this financial product and offers it to potential investors, potential lenders, saying, hey, what? We are offering this particular um, um, financial product with this principal amount and this interest rate, and we are repaying at these intervals. So therefore, that is, like I said, it's like a loan, but it's that the borrower is setting, more or less setting the terms of the loan. They may do it in conjunction with the lender, but I guess it depends on that particular agreement. <clears throat> the 2% is the interest rate, and all interest rates are given per annum, per year. So they give us 100,000 worth of the 2% debenture. So there are no preference shares in this particular issue here. So let's take a look at the journal entry. So what's gonna happen? So when we issue the ordinary shares and the debentures, cash is going to come into the business and cash is an asset. If cash is coming in, the asset of cash is increasing, which will require a debit. And as we know with the general journal, debit entries are made first and then credit entries are made after. So how much money is coming in? So let's do some simple math, right? So 200,000 ordinary shares at a dollar and 50 cents each is gonna give us $300,000. And on top of that, we're bringing in an extra $100,000 via the debentures. So that's gonna give us a total inflow of $400,000 into cash. 
You could use cash, you could use bank, you could use cash slash bank, you could use cash book, but most likely, I mean, cash is fine. Bank is acceptable as well. Okay, now, where is this 400,000 coming from? It's coming from a few places. One is the 200,000 ordinary shares. So it says ordinary share capital, 200,000. But you're saying, but Chris, we sold the 200,000 for $1.50, which is 300,000. That's correct. But remember, I said, you have to account or show the par value separate from the premium. So the par value of the ordinary shares is still a dollar. That didn't change. And you need to show it separately from the premium. The premium is 50 cents. So if you take 50 cents and you multiply it by 200,000, that's like multiplying by a half, right? 0.5 is a half. 200,000 by a half is 100,000. And it's going to say share premium. Now you could put share premium, share premium on ordinary share, ordinary share capital dash share premium. You could even put ordinary share capital par at par. Uh, at, yeah, at par, etc, etc. So you have lots of different things you could put. All right. And of course, finally, don't forget, we have the last 100,000 from the debentures, right? So 2% debentures, right? And it said that no narratives are required. So you didn't have to put an explanation of what the transaction is. As a matter of fact, this item, this, this stuff I've highlighted on top here in gray, you can basically use that just to, to record the issue of etc, etc. Okay, so that's the journal entry for the, this particular transaction. So that's your five marks there. Now, what they want after that is, let me just show you what they want, um, which is an appropriation of profits, right? Uh, a statement to show the appropriation of profits for the six months ended June 30, 2017. Now, that's going to go on to the next page. That is for a total of, I'm trying to find the marks, nine marks. So nine by one and a half is 13 and a half. So between 13 and 14 minutes, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, so what I wanna do is I actually want to um, kind of go through the information here before I start going through the appropriation account. So the accountant informs you that the venture interest had not been included in calculating that income. Now the venture interest is an expense. To calculate that income, you have to have revenue minus expenses. So if you didn't include the debenture interest, you've omitted an expense. So this 140 on top here is not really your true net income. That's net income before interest. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to calculate the interest due on the debentures for the six-month period and subtract it before you make your appropriations. Okay? So... To that end, the, so the board of directors has recommended the following appropriations of profits. So we have a 20,000 to be transferred to the general reserve, 50,000 to the fixed assets replacement reserve. We have an ordinary dividend of five cents per share to be paid. So it says $0.05, dollars. that's five cents. And we have payment of the preference dividend. Now that, that actually, we will discuss that when we do the question, right? So it says, prepare the statement of appropriation of profits. Okay, so what I wanna do, I wanna do a side-by-side -side split, so give me a couple of seconds, let me reorganize my screen. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's scroll up a little bit there, so we get out of the way. All right, cool. So first thing to do, of course, is to head up. So we're doing Green Unlimited Appropriation of Profits account, right, for the six months ending um, 30th June 2017, right? Or you can put statement of appropriations of profit. Let's put some dollar signs there. So the first thing we're going to do, so remember, we're going to start off with the, re, um, the net income that they give us of 140, but we need to adjust it for the debenture interest, which they have not deducted. So net income, right? Now the debenture interest is 2% per annum. 2% of 100,000 is 2,000, but that's for a whole year. We are doing a statement for six months. So six months is half a year. So you're going to have to multiply that 2,000, 2% 2 of 100,000 by a half. That's going to give us 1,000, all right? So again, that's 2% of 100,000 by a half. Why a half? Because it's a six month, a statement for six months and six months is half a year. So we have profit before appropriation of 139. Let's deal with the appropriations. So I'm just gonna put them in the order of appearance with one exception. I'm gonna put the payment of the preference dividend before the ordinary dividend because preference shareholders are paid their dividends before ordinary shareholders, all right? so. We have the transfer to general reserve of 20,000, the transfer to the fixed asset replacement reserve of 50,000. So you can put a subtotal or you could put all of the appropriations in one column and then do a subtotal for all of them. I like separate subtotals, but up to you. Uh, dividend, so the preference dividend, right. So it's 5%, so the preference share dividend is 5% of the value, 
the par value of the preference shares in issue. 5% of 50,000 is 2,500. But remember, percentages are based on a per annum perspective, which means that that 5% will be paid for an entire year. Has an entire year yet passed since the start of the year? No, this statement is for six months. So therefore, we're going to have to divide that. We'll find a half of it or divide it by two, whichever way you want to, um, you want to talk about it. And then the ordinary dividend, so you're going to multiply. So this is where some people have some issues. So we're going to take five cents, right, 0 0.05, and we're going to multiply by the number of shares. Now, we have $300,000 worth of ordinary shares, but each ordinary share is a dollar, a dollar each. So that means that we have 300,000 ordinary shares in issue. So 0 0.05 by 300,000, I believe, is 15,000. Right, and we're going to add those two together, and we're going to get 16,250. Add it to 70,000 for the transfers, gives us 86,250. Subtract it from above, will give us the current year's retained earnings. And now, we are going to add the retained profits brought forward from the previous year. All right, and that's going to give us the retained earnings or retained profits carried forward. Okay, right, so really, really you should try to keep your, um, what you call it, your words or your terms similar and consistent, all right? Now, I used to put these retained earnings at the top here before my appropriations, but um, I've, I've heard discussions and arguments that um, we should really show the appropriation of the current year's profits, right, and not mix up the previous year's profits here to appropriate. Um, again, I would say always follow the instructions of the question, but I think generally, I think most books show that. They show the, the appropriation of the current year's profits and not mix up the retained earnings brought forward. Now, if anybody here has a different opinion or know, or, or, or know from some textbook or some teacher that they add their retained earnings brought forward before your appropriations, message me in the comments. I want to hear what your source of information is because I'm very curious about these different formats and their logic. Okay. Now, the last thing I think in this question that we had to do, right, was the capital reserve section, right? Balance sheet extract. And that was for six marks. So that's about nine minutes you want to spend on that particular part of the question. Okay, so let's, let's go back up here because we're going to need some information from up here in order to do that. And across on this side, I'm going to scroll, I'm going to bring up my information here. Right. Okay, so let's start by heading up. Greenland Limited, Statement of Financial Position Extract, right, as at 30th of June 2017. Okay, so the first thing I want to put is actually, I want to put my capital and reserves heading. And then I'm going to talk about the authorized share capital. Now, they told us what the authorized share capital was here. Now, when you put authorized share capital on a balance sheet, statement of financial position, sorry, you put the items and you double line it because you are not going to be adding that information to anything else or subtracting it from anything else. That is simply there for the purpose of letting people know what the authorized share capital is. So when they look at the issued share capital, issued share capital, they could see how much has been issued out of the total allowable amount, the total legal limit, legal maximum, right? Matter of fact, actually, let's go back down to the other information so we could have that available for viewing. Should we need it? Right, okay, cool. So we have 300,000 worth of ordinary shares and 50,000 worth of preference shares, right? And that's the par value, that's gonna give us 350. Now we also have the reserve. So the share premium of 125, Right, that's going to go, right, share from 125. And then we have the next thing, the general reserve. Now, we had 30,000, right, plus the 20 we transferred via the appropriation account above. All right, the next reserve we have is the fixed asset replacement reserve, 50,000. Now, that was a brand new reserve being created, so we didn't have to add any. There was, there was no pre-existing balances for that item. And we also have to put the, let me just bring it back up here. Right, the retained earnings of 202.750. Okay, so that would be here, giving us total available reserves of 427.750 and total share capital reserves of 777,750. Okay, all right, so ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. If you have any questions or concerns about the, the content here, please message me in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer questions. If you want to check out any more playlists or videos, check out these ones up here. Be sure to, be sure to subscribe and check out my website for free POA handouts. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.